Now, in the approach phase, careful analysis of sonar information begins to reveal the position and motion of the target. The plotting party and the fire control party, using the sonar measurements, begin to pinpoint a target they cannot even see. Slowly, as we move closer and closer to the target, the information is modified, refined, becomes more and more exact. As the solution begins to look good, the final settings are made in the torpedoes. Set medium speed, normal search pattern with running depth 60 feet. And the tubes are made ready for launching. How does your solution look, Mr. Green? I think we have him, sir. We need one more bearing from Sonar Plot. Con Sonar, contact has secured snorkeling. Contact has secured snorkeling. Plot I. Con Sonar, contact is is cavitating. Sounds like he's going deep. Sonar, contact has faded. Sonar, shift to manual tracking and search 30 degrees around last contact. Sonar I. Sonar, do you hold him? Sonar I, wait. Con Sonar, I hold no contact. Sonar holds no contact. Plot I. All stop. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Roger. All stop. Set condition ultra quiet. All stop I. All stop. All stop. Answers all stop. Mr. Krieger, take the con. I'm going below. Aye, sir. I have the con. Moments before the fire control solution is solved. The enemy stops snorkeling and goes deep. Running on battery power, he is almost noiseless. Our strategy? Hover silently so that the enemy won't know we have heard him. Wait for him to give himself away. We picked him up here, snorkeling, Captain, and followed him to here. When he dove, he must have gone right ahead this way, Captain. He could be making a run for it here, Captain. He's got a full charge in his batteries. He may go deep and sneak by us. Right. We probably had him just as he was completing his charge. That means he'll be good for several hours. But he'll have to go slow or we'll hear him. Now, my guess is we ease over this way. We should pick him up about here, right after lunch. Yes, sir. Mr. Thatcher, come right to 200 degrees and make your speed three knots. Aye, sir. And Mr. Thatcher, keep it quiet. Aye, sir. Right full rudder. Right full rudder. The rudder's right full. Maneuvering control, increase turn slowly to three knots. Increase turn slowly to three knots. Maneuvering eye. Steady up on course two zero zero. Steady course two zero zero, Hobart. And now, what is the hardest part of all for some? The waiting. The careful, stealthy moving silently toward where the target possibly may be. The patient biding of time, however long it may take. Submarines used to be weapons of opportunity. They'd cruise around until they happened to find an enemy ship and then wade right in. Today, we bide our time. The modern submarine, with its long range ability and endurance, has become a weapon that chooses its opportunity. We wait to strike until we're sure where our target is. 
Pass the word to man battle stations. I have him again. Snorkeling. Same contact we had this morning. Let's get him this time. How's your solution, Mr. Green? Looks good, sir. All tubes ready in our respects. Match sonar bearings and shoot. Set. Shoot. Fire one. Set. Shoot. Fire two. In an exercise firing of this kind, the target is notified by underwater telephone as soon as the torpedoes are fired. Notify rum runner, the units are away. Aye, aye, sir. Rum runner, rum runner. This is Tabasco, Tabasco. Two acoustic units away. Time, one, two, four, zero hours. Out. Again, nothing to do but wait. The torpedoes will take several minutes to reach the target. If they are on their mark, the target will hear them and report the outcome of the attack over the underwater phone. Tabasco, Tabasco, this is Rum Runner, Rum Runner. Your units contacted on sonar shut down at 1248. We now have them sighted in our wake. Evaluate your firing successful. Rum runner out. For these men, the successful completion of this mission, even though it was just an exercise, is of most critical importance. For well, they are practicing the skills they may someday be called upon to use in earnest. Skills upon which a great deal may depend. They are working in a new dimension, under a new discipline, and armed with a host of new technologies, which even the visionary builders of America's first submarine, the Holland, could never have imagined. Nuclear power revolutionizer of naval strategy, giving birth to what had never been possible before, a true submarine, and the accessories which interlock to make the modern nuclear submarine the finest and most sophisticated weapon system in the fleet, the newest and finest sonar equipment, fire control systems computerized and automated, plus the silent propulsion systems and hydrodynamically streamlined new hull shapes, which provide stealth speed and maneuverability. And yet, it is important to remember in all the sweep of technological advance which has brought these mechanical achievements into existence, that none of it can function without the man. The basic element of military capability, said a prominent naval officer, is man, individual man, with his personal dignity and his pride. No matter what machines, what weapons evolve, they will be the product of man. Man will maintain them, and above all, man must control them. Today, a new breed of forward-thinking men maintain that control over one of the most powerful and sophisticated weapon systems, which stands in defense of the free world. They are the Submariners.